I'm Dr. Sally Foote, veterinarian and animal behaviorist. I have over 35 years of general veterinary practice ownership and experience uh, with a behavior focus. I'm an expert in low stress veterinary care. I do speaking. I have online courses for veterinary staff as well as also for uh, shelter staff and for clients. And I like to use uh, this Facebook Live as a way to you know, present some topics, some ideas and discussion. So last night I was providing a behavior consultation. I do uh, telehealth behavior consultations to clients and any veterinarian can refer to this or trainer. But anyway, last night <clears throat> I had a consultation in a home where there was, um, we were trying to add this you know, third cat and decrease cat aggression that was going on in the home. So, you know, as I looked through the home and the clients walking through showing me things, I started to think about a lot of Christmas decorations have gone up. A Christmas tree, beautiful things on the mantle, etc. And I realized, you know, this is also now displacing, it's taken away some of the places where, you know, some of the cats in the home could have easily gotten up on a shelf, you know, gotten up on a sofa table and away from the other cats. So, it the Christmas decoration was now displacing what we call this feline enrichment, having more places for the cats to perch in the home, even if we didn't think or look at uh, that the mantle, the tabletops, and that floor space in like the living room, etc., are places for the cats to be able to lay, perch, move around, you know, a new space. So even though we didn't, don't intentionally look at things like, um, like I said, the mantle, as space for the cats to hang out and get away from each other. Once you start putting those decorations up, you took it away from the cats. And we may be seeing, sometimes we see increased feline anxiety and aggression here at the holiday time because of some of the um, decorations that have gone up. So I'm gonna kind of go by, talk about each area and what we can do to help make this better while we're maintaining that decor aesthetic because we like putting the decorations up. All right, so let me get my little rag here. First place. Oh, Christmas trees, okay? So I, a lot of people have Christmas trees. Whoops, sorry, just write this, trees. Now, trees, all right, they can be wonderful for cats, right? Kind of like kitty wonderland because they can hide around on the bottom. They may be batting the ornaments off. Maybe you've made it very cat friendly, you know, with safe paper ornaments and you're avoiding any kind of tinsel, that's great. But in essence, think of this. So I'm gonna draw over here. So let's pretend like this is the living room and let's say this is a wall here, this is a wall here. You've got a couch here, right? And maybe you, and this is your other wall coming into your living room. Okay, so you used to have an easy chair here, right? And you have your couch here and <clears throat> maybe like this is also uh, an area where there's in a window, right? But now when it's time to put up the Christmas tree, this is always such a nice area right here where the easy chair is to have a Christmas tree. Now, before a Christmas tree time, the cats may have been laying on the top of the easy chair. They may have laid on the seat of the easy chair. That's basically a cat perch. When the human's not sitting there, the cat's sitting there. So now we move the easy chair out of there, right? And you put the, I'll just put Christmas tree here. And you want the Christmas tree maybe kind of in front of your window too. So everybody sees it outside, it looks so neat, right? So maybe even you position it a little bit this way, right? And so now this tree is taking up this much space, like in the living room, and the cats can't sit on the tree. They lost that easy chair. The easy chair, maybe you moved, I don't know, somewhere over here, or you just tucked it away for the season. But we lost a perching place for the cats. Now, second thing to think about, so now what's gonna happen? The cat, okay, I guess I gotta try to get on the couch. Well, guess what? This cat likes to lay here. This cat likes to lay here. And because they're about six feet apart, they do okay with each other. We add third cat who now tries to jump up here and what happens? He jumps up here on the couch and this cat starts hissing at him because he's saying, hey, this is my perch. Three cats on the couch is too much. I don't want you up here. Uh, and, or that cat does. Okay, so that's a little bit of where you can see the hissing and the competition because they lost 
a comfortable padded upholstered resting place. So that's how this Christmas tree here is adding, you know, to um, adding to the cat aggression. Second thing is the tree, the cats, maybe they can kind of hide underneath it, but especially once the presents start going under the tree, the cats can't. And back when you had the easy chair there, maybe the cats kind of went behind the easy chair at times to kind of get away from staring at the other cat or uh, they could both lay on top of the chair as well as the deck of the chair. Um, so there's a floor space. There's more floor space actually occupied by the Christmas tree and the Christmas tree skirt and the presents. So what happens then, and this is really common for cats, is we get more floor competition. So let's say Kitty, who's now lost his chair he likes to lay on, wants to go up on the couch. Cat's hissing at him on the couch, so now he's gotta be on the floor more. And so he's on the floor, and when this cat jumps off to try to walk across the room, you have more chasing, more hissing, you know, more running around and kind of that rough and tumble in the middle of the living room floor. And it's because they lost space from each other, okay? So what do we do? How do we make this better? All right. So, yes, you're going to have a Christmas tree, <laughs> okay? I get that. And so I'm just going to, I'm going to, here's some tips. First of all, when you have your Christmas tree whether it's natural or fake, make sure, I'm just gonna erase this, okay? I'm gonna draw a picture of a tree real quick. All right, so this is my Christmas tree. Please don't laugh. All right, so here's your base, right? All right, when you guys have your Christmas tree, do not add the lower branches if it's fake. If you have an artificial tree, keep the last like row off because we need this space here. We need some clearance here for your cats to be able to move around underneath the tree and utilize that floor space. Do you have a, sorry, I'm making this kind of confusing looking, aren't I folks? Okay, so uh, skip branches, lower branches that is. If you got a natural tree, cut those lower branches off. So you've got a good like two feet up, 24 inches from the bottom of the floor to the top of like the first branch. So give, if that seems like a lot, at least a minimum of 16 inches because the cats need to have the ability to walk with their full height and not have the branches like scraping over their head. Okay, now the tree skirt. The tree skirts, some cats like the tree skirts to scooch around and play on. That can be okay. Some cats will don't like the feel of the texture of the tree skirts so when you've got a tree skirt, I'll just say this. If at least we make it something that's appealing for the cats will like to lay on. And cats love fleece. Consider a fleece tree skirt. Uh, there's lots of cute fabrics and everything like that. So we make it appealing for the cats to be there. They're not going to be hiding. But this now, instead of, so now we have a, a tree skirt they'll want to be on. And, and no presents under the tree till Santa comes at midnight on, New Year, on Christmas Eve, okay? Um, so we encourage the cats to want to lay here and those branches are high enough that they're not going to be knocking the nor ornaments off or eating anything or getting into anything. Now we really haven't lost the space. The Christmas tree then, it's minimizing that displacement of floor space or um, floor space and kind of movement area to be around. Now we still lost a comfortable perching place, right? We lost the easy chair. So what we can consider is then looking at, is there a place we can move the easy chair that will mimic where it sat before? Or somehow put another pillow, a nice pillow, or maybe even the base pillow from that easy chair, if you're just like putting in the other room for Christmas time, we're just minimizing, you know, one chair in the um, living space. Put that cushion from the base of the easy chair, maybe uh, in, a, in a nearby corner of the room, so now it is a cat bed, because that is their cat bed, okay? So moving that. All right, uh, next thing, besides trees, mantles. If you have a fireplace and you have a mantle, now, this is the day and age where people always have their flat screen TV above their fireplace mantle. But the flat screen TV bases tend to be pretty narrow. 
So a lot of cats can still, let's just make my horrible looking uh, fireplace here, sorry folks. So before Christmas, right? This is like your fireplace. And this is your mantle. And then usually there's like, you know, your living room all coming here. Okay. okay, so before Christmas, there was probably a way, whether you had a chair here or, you know, some kind of a bookcase. The cats before Christmas time could probably go from here and hop up, you know, to the mantle, right? They had room on the mantle. But now Christmas is here, so now we've got all sorts of decorations, snowmen, little gnomes, and cute garland, and, you know, stockings hanging from the mantle place. Well, it's beautiful. It's beautiful in the home, definitely. But now the cat says, uh, ugh, lost my place to get up. And especially for the tree dweller cats, the cats would like to be high because most mantles are going to be about four and a half feet to five feet off the ground. That cat says, ugh. Now I got to go to a lower level, like just the back of that chair or the seat of the easy chair or be on top of a bookcase, which in this case, I'm showing like a three foot bookcase. And that cat says, this is too low. I want to be higher. And now I am going to keep trying to find higher places or I'm going to be up here. But the other cat, my brother cat always liked to be up here. So now we're going to have kitty competition over the bookcase. So, mantles, hmm. Uh, here's what I, I try to strike a compromise. Let's strike a compromise, okay? What does that mean? You have a beautiful mantle. Edit your decor. Edit the decor. I know you're gonna want decor on there. Yes, got it. But if we can edit, limit how much we're putting on the surface here, okay? You could still have garland, but have the garland attach underneath the shelf still have your you know stockings hanging in some way but on top of the shelf part here i get it you may not move the television especially if you want to watch a lot of cool movies and you know music specials etc at christmas time fine and the tvs if it's always been up there the cat's okay with the tv up there but <clears throat> now we're gonna have to say okay i'm choosing one stuffed gnome or one maybe scented candle, but honestly, I'd skip the candles because the cats are going up there and you light the candle. Guess what? It could get knocked over and have a house fire. No, thank you. Okay, so maybe one, one little stuffed gnome here with like another little one here. But we skip this one and we skip this one. So in other words, kind of keep your decor asymmetrical more to maybe one end and think about how cats are going to need it about six inches wide, maybe eight inches wide of a landing spot, like eight inches by 14 inches. They need that kind of length of a landing spot. So a lot of times people think like, oh, well, he could get up there. Uh, if he doesn't have clearance to like this point along the mantle, you know, that needs to look like it's an open shelf and I can land when I jump up there. And then he can maneuver his way around like so behind the TV or whatever. Okay, but you've got to keep at least one end open. So look, watch how, which, which way would the cat usually get up on the mantle? Would he tend to go to the chair and then the chair up, if that's the case? This would be the free end with the core here. The cat usually, nope, he likes to be on the bookcase, put the bookcase there. Okay, fine, this will be the open end, undecorated basically end. This will be the decorated end, okay? So mantles, you have to strike a compromise. You gotta edit the mantle. Okay, um, maybe just look around the house for kind of other little places or spaces to hang or put some of this decor. Okay, um, but that's basically, that's how mantles displace our cat enrichment that people oftentimes don't even think about or realize. All right, Sorry. what's the third one? All righty, ah, general tabletops. You know, like the sofa table, I'm just gonna put tabletops. So, you know, we may not realize it, but <clears throat> end tables, sofa tables, you know, maybe even the middle of the dining room table, you know, if you've got a nice dining room table, we now have put like a nice centerpiece, or again, this arrangement of a scented candle and a hurricane glass with some garland around it, et cetera, et cetera. Well, it's nice. Now let's say if this cat, we had, especially in dining room tables. 
So I had a dining room table, which throughout most of the year, you just sat and ate your meals at, or maybe you worked from, did you put the laundry down while you're, you know, getting it through the house to put it away, etc. But most of the time you had pretty much of an open surface here with maybe just like, you know, your computer books here, or maybe your pile of laundry here, but pretty much day to day, the cats could jump up and they could lay here or they could lay here and lay here, which gives the cats enough space from each other on this dining room table. And that's how it is a cat perch and it's a part of the enrichment of the home, whether you realize it or not. All right, now it's Christmas time, right? What happens at Christmas time? Okay, it's nice, right? Here's your nice uh, antique hurricane lamp with a big pretty candle in it, right? And then your you know, holly or whatever decor around it, right smack in the middle of the table. And you're still gonna work. So you come over here and you've got your computer here and you're working, and in the middle of the week, you may still need to put your laundry here, right? So now when this kitty comes up to jump up here, they've lost their room to be able to maneuver and they may be kind of stuck there. And then just depending on, or sometimes people may move even the dining room table, but anyway, you get it, that the other cat may come here, but they're kind of like stuck and they may not be able to move around or use as much of the dining room table. And of course, if now there's gonna be more parties um, or like a big meals, open houses and events, not only on the night that you have that event, which now this whole table is gonna be filled, right? With food, before you have the event, you're getting your dishes out and you're getting your, you know, your serving pieces out, et cetera, to get ready for the party. So like the table is full of stuff, right? decor or other things to get ready for the party it's a couple days before the party, the night of the party, and then after the party, even though you've cleared away a lot of dishes, now you gotta clean the dishes and put them all back away. So this table, the dining room table kind of is out of, is no longer a place for the cats to be able to perch and to be. So that's how our dining room tables kind of become a part of this. Sofa tables, similar thing. Usually they have you know, like a nice long table on there now put on there with decor. And the cat looks at it going, oh, oh my gosh, I can't see that surface. How do I get up there? All right, so what do we do? I'll just get back to that. Edit. Edit your decor. Pick maybe your most favorite thing. I'll look at, before you put the decor up there, look at where do the cats like to be when they're on the dining room table. Yeah, I let them up there. Okay, fine. It's your home. I don't care. As long as you're nice to your animals, whatever you want to do is what you do. So if you're like, oh, but gee, I really want to put that hurricane lamp on there. I want that table to look really nice. Okay, so how about this? Limit it to things that are kind of either slender or have a solid base. We don't want the cats knocking them over. But avoid a lot of big greenery, you know, and stuff, because that's what now really takes over the top, if you will. And the cats don't wind, or they don't tend to wind around, you know, uh, greenery or you know garlands etc so if you've got that hurricane light with this candle in it fine make that something that's just like a pillar and especially if it can somehow elevate and then make it bigger going up I mean I think I, see, I think a lot of you see these like at weddings how now the centerpieces go up so you can see around it and then that's where it's big because then again you're gonna work every day over here right that's your work spot and maybe you still throw the laundry here but now this cat can get up here and go around or this cat so that way they feel like they have more space so edit and be a little creative with think keep thinking i've got to keep this dining room tabletop open sofa tables uh, i treat them like a mantle so you know a sofa table is kind of long and narrow usually goes right behind a sofa or maybe on a wall near an entryway gives you a place to throw your keys down and mail and stuff and now we put a table runner on there and then you've got, you know, your garland. The cat says, ah, can't get up there. They won't because they see this space is filled with things. So the runner itself, that will be something that some cats will just hesitate to go on because they may not like the texture of it or it may slide. So in a lot of people may also not want the cats on a nice, uh, you know, fabric runner going on a sofa table because of the cat hair that gets on there. So uh, the first thing I'm going to say is, let's go back to our sofa table, sorry. Say, okay, thoughtfully edit the decor. If this is a really, really 
if this is really important to you to have that table runner on there, then and you don't want the cats on there. You've got to make another kind of table like this somewhere in your house. You've got to open up some space somewhere. Put that cat food on that other tabletop to really track them on there so they don't want to go up here. And fine, then if this is like a very nice, you know, woven, who knows, you know, tapestry, whatever, table runner that you love, have the runner and add them to keep the cats off of it. Add like decor, but add another table somewhere. Add some other kind of tabletop surface for the cats to get on because you they just lost this. Now, if that table runner is not so super special to you and you're like, okay, fine, you know, I'm going to keep, how can I keep this? sofa table available while still looking nice at Christmas time, then again, like I treat it like a mantle. Which direction do the cats usually come up on the sofa table? Because if they tend to come up this direction, make it a bit asymmetrical. We'll put, you know, whatever it is, your little gnomes, your things, you know, um, vase or whatever, put it toward against the wall and more toward one end. Keep the decor stuff that goes more against this wall area because that's what keeps this open for the cats to be able to walk across. And if they can see the wood surface or like a glass surface or a you know ceramic or stone surface, they'll recognize it as like, oh, I know that surface, I can get up on there. But you're gonna want to still keep this dimension here at least eight to 10 inches wide. They need that wide of a pathway. So things have to go back against the wall on the sofa table. Okay, so last thing is they, they're gonna lose space, right? So they're gonna lose some space and, and, and the bright lights and the, you know, just things look interesting and they, they have fluff and fur, the cats may start getting into it. Like, wow, you brought this out for me to play with. And Sometimes uh, people get frustrated and they start yelling at their cats and spraying them with a water bottle to say stop it, which all increases feline agitation and aggression, which then they may direct on each other or on the client, on the owner. So let's not go there. What are we gonna do? We're gonna play the kill your food game. <laughs> What's the kill your food game? That's where you take the nuggets, their little nuggets of dry food, stop feeding them out of the bowl. We're gonna use food puzzles. Okay, number one. This is how you're gonna increase enrichment because we took stuff away with decor, right? Food puzzles, now, you know what? Do not use a little tray where they just have to try to find it. No, 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 I want them to be batting and rolling things around on the floor to have to knock the food out and actually work for it, okay? So there's uh, again, the exerciser, you could use an empty plastic water bottle that you cut some holes and then the cats have to roll it around. Second thing is hide the food. Remember, cats want to hunt, right? So that means you're gonna have just like a little tiny old saucer from a teacup or maybe, you know, a small little plate and put one tablespoon of dry food on that and keep changing the places in the house on shelves. And again, even if it is, I want you to get up on that sofa table. I edited my decor so you'll keep using the sofa table. Put a, little, put a little dish of food up there to encourage your cat to go up there and get accustomed to walking past these things that are on the sofa table. Uh, play. Every day, the human, the human has to go get that feather toy, maybe a laser light, and always drop, drop a piece of food at the end of the laser light that they've chased so they're not frustrated. But play with the human. 10 minutes a day. Per cat, okay, per cat. So uh, this could be where, you know, you drag the feather toy and you, we want, we do not want the one toy dragged around three cats because they may all start jumping on the one toy and then they'll compete for the one toy. So you're gonna have to have two feathers on a string and you're gonna be getting, get my right way on this camera. Moving it this way to keep cat A busy over here on my right while I'm tossing a ball on my left or waving another toy here on my left. So cat B is busy on the left while this one's on the right and they each have their own toys to play with. About 10 minutes a day is the minimum enough for keeping most cats happy at home, but we don't, humans don't play enough with their cats. They, we leave the toys out, oh, he plays by himself. But, and remember, you gotta rotate the toys as well. 
So if they were drag, if you're dragging around the feather toy on Monday, put it away in the closet. Tuesday, get the little sparkly busy balls, toss those around, put those away on Tuesday. Wednesday, you'll get um, just even a tin paper, tin foil ball to toss around, you know, so you keep changing it up. And then Thursday, you can go back to, you know, Monday's toy. About every three days, it's kind of the memory level of a cat where they forget that they killed that toy a few days before. All right, so you get the idea. So this is how we can help our cats be happy and, um, and kind of replace what they lost over this holiday period due to decorations and how we can encourage each other to still put out the Christmas decorations, but look at it in a different way, edit things a little bit, um, and also uh, just make sure we've got the spaces open for our cats and watch our cats or think like, hmm, how did they get up there? And, then, and everybody will be happy that way. Thank you so much. I really appreciate your time. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'll be loading this up on the YouTube channel. I also have a lot of handouts on my website, as well as um, information about vet, veterinarian to veterinarian consults. I'm offering that. So if you veterinarians out there are having some struggling or you know uh, want to discuss what is the best medication plan, especially for pre-examination uh, for low-stress veterinary care with that five-point plan for calm, low-stress care for our aggressive and agitated cats and dogs, and I also am offering a virtual staff training. But use my website, I got a lot of free handouts, a YouTube channel, et cetera, and my shop where I have courses for your clients as well as for vet staff uh, for learning. Thank you so much, take care, bye-bye.